This guy here might just be one of the best closed loop coolers that you can get for your builds for more than just thermal performance alone. In this review, I'll compare against the popular NZXT X53 cooler and let's take a look at what makes the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 so cool. Welcome back to Machines and More. While high-end air cooling is an incredible way to manage CPU temperatures, uh, closed loop or so-called all-in-one liquid coolers are a very popular option in PC builds too. Arctic's Liquid Freezer 2 was a unit recommended for testing by some of our viewers, especially for the Cooler Master NR200, and thank you to all that recommended testing this one out. Arctic sent by a 240 millimeter review unit of their revision B for us to check out, so a big thanks to them for making this review possible. If you've ever considered a closed loop cooler for your build, chances are you've come across and perhaps even used one of these NZXT Kraken units. I often use the X52 for thermal testing. I use this X53 in my NKSM1, and these are all fairly well-regarded Tech units. So this 240 millimeter AIO is a good comparison for today's review. Now, Arctic's Liquid Freezer 2 is a very unique AIO. From the moment you take it out of the box, you know you've got something truly unique. Uh, the most notable feature of this series is this extra thick radiator. Uh, while most closed loops in the industry feature radiators around 25 millimeters in thickness, I measured this one uh, with a total frame at about 38 millimeters, a thickness that you might find only in a custom loop radiator. Now, all else being equal, extra radiator thickness equates to extra heat exchange surface area, and that means greater cooling potential. It's not exactly linear though, since your fans do have to be capable of working air through the thicker radiator, and the impact of having a wider radiator and extra fans such as a 360 millimeter unit is much more prominent. Now that being said, this extra thickness is still a neat feature as long as your case can fit it. Other than the radiator, this pump block features a rather unique motherboard and VRM cooling fan. And I'll discuss the performance of this uh, shortly when we get to thermal testing. For me, the single most impressive thing about this unit is just how clean looking it is. My biggest complaint with AIO is this just sheer number of cables you have tying up all your sweet, sweet, precious space in an SFF case. With the X53, let's see what we need. Uh, we've got this here, which connects the unit to the USB header for control. Then there's this whole mess here. Uh, this one connects to the pump block, then connects to a fan header, connects to the RGB, connects to the SATA power. And if you're a fan of M.2s, you just ruined all your space savings uh, by having to run this SATA cable back to your PSU. Oh, and I think we're forgetting something, right? You got two fan cables, and then a splitter to hook it up to the same fan header. Okay, that's a lot of cables, right? When I unboxed this unit and I took it, I almost thought something was missing from the box because there's just one very discreet looking cable to hook up to the motherboard. One. This cable provides power to the pump head and power to the fans and the fan cables uh, are, are run via extensions and they're really neatly sleeved up next to the tubing um, in this braided housing. Now, if you wanted to switch fans out, you can still do that. Uh, you'll just unhook the short fan cables from the extensions. Of course, this unit doesn't have any RGB lighting. And if you want that on your pump block, well, I guess you're kind of out of luck on this unit. But there are still a gazillion ways to light up your case nowadays. So for the RGB lover, there is still hope. The two included fans are Arctic's own P12 PWM fans. I think these are one of the greatest steals in today's PC component market. They have a fantastic static pressure performance, have a great CFM to noise ratio, and on a noise normalized basis, these come in ever so slightly behind what I'd consider the king of all 120 millimeter fans, the venerable Noctua NFA 12 by 25 millimeter but they only cost about a fifth as much. Now mounting the unit is fairly simple. For AM4, you'll mount two bars, these two bars to the pump block, 
and then utilize the standard AM4 back plate with your motherboard to thread the mounting screws into. Now there aren't any standoffs required on this install because the screws themselves act like standoffs and they'll bottom out before any severe uneven pressure can be applied to the CPU. Always tighten the screws in a star pattern though. For Intel sockets, the pump brackets are just flipped to flare out and the included Intel backplate and washers are used along with four standoffs. A small envelope of Arctix MX4 thermal paste is included, although there's just enough, barely enough for two mounts if you're careful. I found installation to be very, very manageable. Although the emission of standoffs for AM4 does mean you have to be a bit creative on how you hold the backplate while holding the pump block and screwing it in. Now you can tape the back plate down if you need. In the NR200, the side panel actually provides somewhat of a backstop for the AM4 back plate. And if you're careful, you can get enough thread into the back plate to hold it down enough while you thread the other screws in. Now, bribing a friend with beer is also a good option, short of growing an extra arm. The thicker radiator and lack of 90 degree bends on the pump block does make a little bit of a challenge for smaller cases and the NR200 just fits it, despite the tubing sustaining pressure. Now this came in at just the threshold of where I'd scrapped the install completely. Any more limited room and there will be just too much pressure on the barbs. Uh, routing the tubing is a bit of a challenge, but in the NR200 case, this can still be safely managed over the PSU shroud and will still allow the top fans to clear. The pump block is a very interesting shape and there is a built-in 40 millimeter cooling fan hooked up with a tiny, tiny cable that will blow air in the vicinity of the pump block to cool your motherboard. On boards with weak VRM stages or cases where airflow is just so terrible, this could be a saving grace. The pump block and VRM levels follow the PWM signal that's provided by the motherboard or fan controller. Finally, the coolant level in this cooler isn't full enough to where I'd consider mounting uh, this to the bottom of the case since I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear some significant sloshing when shaking the radiator. Um, on system startup, there's gonna be a lot of liquid sound coming from the pump block, and this is actually quite normal. Now for thermal testing, I ran Blender's classroom render on an all-core overclocked Ryzen 7 3700X, and this render takes about nine minutes to complete, beyond the time it would take either of these two test units to reach thermal equilibrium. In between each test, I allowed a minimum of 10 minutes for the liquid to cool back down before retesting. Now to get a good set of inferences for all users, I tested with the radiator in open air, and I also side mounted in the optimal intake orientation on the Cooler Master NR200 side panel. The units were tested at a 45, uh, 44 and a half decibel noise normalized level, which is four and a half decibels above my noise floor. And also with the fans at 100% for each unit to see what the top end performance was like. The pump speed on the NZXT X53 was set at the performance curve, which basically meant that during the test it was running at 100%. So how does it perform? The Arctic P12s are really quiet and at 70% fan speed and 1320 RPM, these equated to 40% and 1000 RPM on the stock NZXT's Air P120 fans. At this level and in open air, I measured a 2.6 degree advantage for the Arctic unit. The exact same delta carried through to in-case testing where the thicker radiator and less airflow space didn't seem to create any real difficulty for the fans, indicating fairly reliable static pressure performance. At 100%, interestingly, these two units yielded exactly the same level of thermal performance. Of course, the X53 did so well, producing 11 more decibels than the liquid freezer. To the human year, that difference indicates a perception of more than twice the amount of noise. In the case, the X53 is marginally cooler, but again, at a noise penalty of more than twice that of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. So here's a quick sound sample of just the vast sound difference of the two units at equal RPM levels.
Now you might have noticed at 1200 RPM or so, the P12s did exhibit a little growl or howl, however you call it. But overall, the P12s are really great performance as uh, radiator fans. Uh, besides thermal performance, the VRM and motherboard fan was something I wanted to test. For the most part, at least for AIOs on side-mounted panels, there no, there's no real concern for motherboard cooling since even if it's warm air, there's still a vast amount of air movement directly on the motherboard. So what I did was I compare, uh, compared the board thermals between having the VRM fan off and the VRM fan running with the radiator outside the case. Now I also threw in a test with the top case fan turned off just to illustrate what was more critical for motherboard thermals. As you can see, there's not a huge amount of significance with the VRM fan on or off, but there's a huge impact from having top case fans off. Um, note that these are still well under a safe temperature for, for VRMs, which at worst were still 55 degrees in a 25 degree room. I wouldn't really be concerned until they creep up above 80 degrees. Now with the exception of a few lower tier ASRock boards, most of the Z490, X570, B550, ITX motherboards all have really decent VRM stages, and some of them are even paired with an active cooling fan already. So where this uh, VRM fan might be applicable would be something like a, a B450 ITX or a lower Z390 board uh, when running a higher powered chip like a 3900X or a 9900K. In less than optimal case airflow scenarios, your board will actually appreciate the little boost from having this VRM fan. But honestly though, if you're running something like a 10600K or a Ryzen 7 on any of those boards I just mentioned, I really wouldn't worry too much about the benefit of a VRM fan. Uh, if you have a problem with VRM thermals, in general, you've got some bigger issues with case airflow to address first. So what makes this unit so great? As I mentioned earlier, radiator thickness isn't as critical as having more radiator space. So a 360 will eat any 240 for lunch, right? Is it the fans? or is it the thicker radiator that makes this closed loop so good? Well, I happen to have a set of Arctic P12s uh, on hand. So what I did was I just slapped these onto the X53 for a quick test. At 100%, you can see from this data that the P12s close that margin to within a degree between the two AAOs. Uh, just by going with these fans, the X53 gets a humongous quietness boost despite being marginally warmer. The Air P120 stock fans at 100% do spin faster at 2000 RPM versus 1700 RPM on the P12s, so that's where there's a small thermal difference. When noise normalized to 43 decibels or so for the entire system, the Arctic P12s allow a performance gain of 1.5 degrees, so that closes the gap between the liquid freezer and the X53 to about a degree or so. The bigger advantage really happens at the higher end of the fan curve, where you can now run higher fan speeds without a severe noise penalty. So yes, the thicker radiator does yield some gains, but at least from the testing done here, the fans are responsible for most of the performance difference. This is great news for anyone who can't fit the thicker radiator in their system or has a decent Asetek unit already. For about 10, 15 bucks for a pair of these um, Arctic P12s, you'll get a meaningful performance boost. In summary, this is a fantastic closed loop cooler and I am extremely impressed by its features and its performance. I'd love to see a 25 millimeter thick radiator unit from Arctic along with a pump block that has 90 degree bends for maximum compatibility and I think that would do really, really well for SFF enthusiasts. If you have the clearance in your case, you will be hard pressed to find a better performing 240 millimeter AIO. And if you really want to go all out, uh, you can put two of these uh, Noctua NFA 12 by 25s on this cooler and you'll get the best CPU performance short of going with a custom loop in your build. If you found the review helpful, I have left some product links down below and please use them to support the channel. And also subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time on this channel.